This is a Boardwalk Audio podcast. Today's show is brought to you by BarkBox.com. Get one free extra month of BarkBox at BoardwalkAudio.com forward slash BarkBox. Shelby wants to talk about, Shelby the dog Shelby. wants to weigh in on this. She won BarkBox. She wants so, those four yeah. to six uh, treats and curated toys every every month. Basically, this is Shelby's way of saying, I want new toys and I want some delicious snacks. Yeah. Get you, some. You can go on BarkBox and you tell them if your dog is small and cute, just right, or big and bold. I think Shelby's small and cute, right? Yeah, she's small and cute. She's like, yeah. I'm she's cute. very much joining in on this. You can choose one, <laughs> six, or 12 months. She's like, give me 12 months. Give me two years. Yeah, I give want me a full subscription. Life. Give me toys. Uh, give me treats. <laughs> you can cancel any time. Free shipping. Free shipping. Oh. Free shipping. Oh my God, right, Shelby? Right, Shelby? Yes, yeah, so you get a free month at BarkBox. So if you go to Boardwalk Audio slash BarkBox, you can get a free month. Other than that, it's just like 20 bucks and it's free shipping. Yeah, and like they have different themes every month, so it's like a little happy surprise. Oh, it's like St. Patrick's Day, you get like little leprechauns. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, oh my gosh. Shelby wants BarkBox. You guys, if that is not a ringing endorsement, I don't know what is. Shelby approved, guys. Go to boardwalkaudio.com forward slash BarkBox. Enjoy the show. Yay! I just drink wine. Wine. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the wine, wine situation. situation. Nah. Hi, Hi, Ellen. Sean. How are you? I'm so good. It's How are so you? so good to see you it's on so this good. side of the mic. I <laughs> <laughs> never usually, have. <laughs> usually she's on the other side of the mic. Uh, wait, what do you... On the microphone? Yeah, yeah. The microphone. Am I normally like angled yeah. differently? No, I mean, me? I just or, I just yeah. thought I'd say it like, yeah. it's like that's a common like colloquialism. Oh, yeah. But I'll it's see not. you on the other side of the on the other side, side of the mic. Like, uh, on this side of the mic. Sean Buchholz, our fearless wine whisperer. Who that's... Uh, Worked for our someone who we're going to introduce to you shortly. Spoiler and, alert! Spoiler alert! The uh, most talked about name on this podcast is sitting in the very studio you guys, right now. I can't lie; I've been like a little nervous today. I'm very excited. We've built him up, yeah, so much, and now we've delivered him to you. We're just trying to do everything. <laughs> I mean, he better live up. Like, let's not do oh, make him no nervous. No pressure on him. No, he, a, he, he did. He we'll did it. Make His him job look, is done. He showed up. He could be terrible. We will make him look gold. Uh, exactly. We're here to hold him up. We're, high. Yes, we're here to elevate yes, him. Yes, he is Simba. <laughs> if you can see the two of us, we're both like uh, my mom, my champion uh, posing. Yeah, we're like yeah, power posing. Power posing. Yeah. Oh, power pose. Yeah. Yeah, that feels good. Th- that does feel good. Yeah. yeah. We were holding our hands up, people at home. Um. Um, yeah, so this is the wine situation, guys. Welcome. In case Where we you pair didn't know. wines with wines. The, the, yeah. Today we're doing a little less pairing. But uh, before we get into the details of the show, do you want to do the hip sip tip? Oh, sure. What is your hip sip tip? I well, feel like you were excited about your hip sip tips this Oh, week. yeah. I mean, this one is, uh, there's a different one I was referencing before. This one is a wine. Um, and I, it's, I, I didn't know what our famed guest was bringing us today. So it's kind of funny. I'd already made the. I wanted to talk about. I had a Mexican Nebbiolo. Oh. Yeah, my my friend Shahrazad, you know her. She yeah. she uh, took a trip to the Guadalupe Valley. I heard uh, it's really fun. Yeah, she brought back a bunch of wines that I tasted some I hadn't really loved, and then she apparently they're doing Nebbiolo in Mexico now, and it was really good. It was definitely How did it, taste? it was really good. It was it was definitely a new world. It was very fruity, berry berry rich, yeah. I would say, but it had like that really distinct tar thing to it. Oh. Didn't oh, get so cool. much of the roses. Yeah. I feel like all wine from Mexico tastes like sunshine. <laughs> it tasted like tar. I don't know what that means. But Shiny all the tar. Wine, it's just, I'm like, this tastes like sunshine to oh. me. Uh, no, well, this one <laughs> like tastes... like Sunny D. This no, one tasted... <laughs> yeah. This wine tastes like Sunny D. No. That would be a bad pairing for Nebbiolo. Yeah, no. Orange juice and wine. <laughs> that cool. sounds like... Anyway, so no, that's thanks. that was my hip cool. tip. Was uh, Mexican Nebbiolo. They're yeah. doing it there. It's good. Nice. What'd you drink? Um, well, mine's actually like uh, coffee drinks. What? What? Spoiler alert! No, um, <laughs> there's no double coffee. spoiler. We've been uh, drinking coffee before. We came. Actually, <laughs> no tea. Tea. It's a little with bit of tea. Uh, um, 
No, we wouldn't uh, do that. No, uh, Go Get Em Tiger does these holiday drinks for Ooh. Thanksgiving. So they do their take on the Starbucks. 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 That's um, what they call it so they Starbucks. don't get sued. Yeah, exactly. You have a Starbucks Frappadino. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Have you had a frappuccino? It's a pumpkin spice. Hey, can I get a frappuccino? Lawsuit. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like for the pumpkin spice, they have like a tiny pumpkin pie on top of a latte. <gasps> yeah, and it's they're amazing. So I had like a coffee nut one and like oh, this yum. weird cup of noodles thing. It was Wait, wild. With a cup of noodles or in a cup of noodles? So it was like in the shape of a cup of noodles oh. container, and then you poured in hot almond milk okay. into these like toffee chips and you stirred it up oh. yeah and then you drank it it was like a toffee nut Yum. thing it was really good and then yeah and then you had like a coffee packet you put in there too so it was all f- kinds of great stuff i love it yeah so that was my hip tip tip and i felt oh. pretty hip because it was like a hip coffee yeah. shop and a lot of hip people and i was like i'm not cool enough to be here you're so you you're in with that crowd though uh, a little bit like i went there with sean once though and he's just like bitching over the counter to the people working there they knew each <laughs> other like they're they're over at covell drinking and they're just slinging you drinks and you're like i don't pay uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are they are good friends they go they're way just back friends so. up the street yeah they're neighbors you know good neighbors uh let's bring up our uh our mail our mailbag oh, question because yeah, we, mailbag we question? can then we can enter our guest and he can help us answer it because i, I think it. he'd be qualified I mean, so uh, Shahrazad, the same person who knew enough to get uh, Nebbiolo from Mexico, she had a a question that she wrote in with. uh, Hit me. Wrote, she texted in. We were not asking our friends to send. You guys, we want you to email us or text us us or tag us. We want your questions. We want your questions. We want we want to give you answers. Yes. Or answers. We want to be of service. Yeah. The wine situation at gmail dot com. You can tag us on things. Just yeah. Yeah. Whatever. You know. If you send think us, of it, text us. Text us, find us on social media. Just yeah. send us a, a message. Um, so Shahrazad wanted to know, what's the best wine to bring to a party where no one else appreciates fine wine like I do, but I also don't want to drink plonk? Basically, something I can enjoy but won't be wasted on others. So I'm thinking what she wants is something yummy with a good price point. Yeah. Uh, or something that can maybe turn a non-wine person into a wine person. Ooh, that's a good that's a good rephrasing of the question. Yeah. yeah. How do you like a like get a good wine that will turn people that's like, what? Yeah. What is this? Because my I just want a drink and I don't want plonk that I can grab at the grocery store was usually my answer to our grocery store challenges. I'm like, well, I just get like the higher level Ravenswood. <laughs> you love Ravenswood. I do. But like, I feel like bringing like a, like a Carmenere or something would be interesting, but yeah. it, like, it's a good gateway wine, you know? Yeah. It's I'm, like still new world. People be like, oh, it's fruity and delicious and I could drink it or. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I have like a specific wine I would advise her to bring that maybe would change people's minds. Yeah. Hmm. We'll think about it. Well, I'm going to intro, yeah, we'll um, intro our, our guest, guest and, and he can help us answer this. Like, let me tell you. Um, let well, me tell you about this. We've said his name on the show maybe more times than any other name I ever spoken in the world. I believe, I mean, I was doing my research and approximately 472 <laughs> times. Is that what you were doing all night? <laughs> in the last 20, <laughs> Ellen, 27 You have to episodes. sleep at some point. I know. I'm you can't just... stay up because you're a goth. You don't sleep. <sighs> I don't you don't sleep. need sleep. Not at night. Your dark, dark soul doesn't need rest. I sleep when the sun comes out. I you? know. Uh, well, he worked with Gordon Ramsay in New York, founding some at the Alex Restaurant in The Win in Las Vegas. Worked with uh, Gary Denko in San Francisco. He's a... Uh, he had the honor of employing Sean Bickle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly employer of said me. Um, past the W sets, uh, court of masters. I mean, it's just, it goes on and on. It's Gregory Condes, you guys. He's in the studio. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hello, Ellen. (laughs) Hello, Sean. It's so exciting to have you here. So excited to have you here. We're so excited. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I can't believe that I'm here with you guys. I mean, this is... And Zig. Zig. Zig Zig in the flesh. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like... (laughs) Lacing the track, locking the flow, you guys. We're like <laughs> DJs here. Just keep it going, you know? Thank you so much. Thank Ellen, you for coming John. out. Thank you. Thanks for this coming. This man flew in from San Fran today. Yeah, just, San Francisco. It's like, I'll just jet on over and do, the, do your little show. <laughs> That's right. You know, there's like Uber, NetJet sort of stuff now. Oh, also really? in the Southwest. Oh. <laughs> you know, for, for those of you. I'm Sky a Southwest bus, Sky fan. I, I like them. I like the whole like number system. Everybody's mm, yeah. sort of equal. 
equal in a way, yeah. except for depending on the letter. I the like number. the like cheesy <laughs> jokes and things they always tell. They tell yeah. a lot of cheesy jokes on Southwest, and I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, you know, they the, some people have flair. Um, you know, like back mm-hmm. in the you know the the, the Office Space movie. Where oh yeah, flair, the TGI Fridays. Thing. Right, right. Yeah. But, oh yeah. But their flair is what they say and how oh, they yeah. say it. Uh, the, yeah. They keep it fun. They keep it light. They do. You know, I love that. They give a lot of snacks. They come by with like whole trays and they're like, take it all. And you're like, I'll have pretzels and Oreos. Thank you. Mm. Do you know any times they've given me free drinks on these flights? Really? We're now breaking this, uh, (laughs) taking a break in our regularly scheduled uh, podcast to uh, announce we have a new sponsor. Southwest. (laughs) Greg, this is your last chance to sponsor us. (laughs) No, this is it. You got a bunch of free free airline tickets now coming at you. What's happening is we're doing the podcast on a plane. <laughs> from now on out. Actually, they have Wi-Fi, and I always use the. I'm like I email and I'm text because you could text and stuff. Oh. And like it's oh, um, yeah. like people have no idea that I'm at thirty five thousand feet. We're like just working. It's great because nobody can call you. You're on in your own sort of little zone and get your work rocking done. and rolling, and it's pretty peaceful actually. Well, you are the hardest working man in wine business. Oh. I know that to be true. Well, that's I mean, good, he so. we were trying to have him on the show since he sponsored us and then I think it was in August, I think he finally texted Sean, I can be on the show November 30th. Yeah, we're like <laughs> we're locking it in. We locked it in right away. We're like, "Yes." And look, we he's here. He I know. Through. I'm amazed actually. I kind of was through. surprised is, there wasn't gonna, yeah. like a wine emergency that this is some Northern California follow through right here. I love it. <laughs> I, I like to do what I say, say what I do, honor the commitments. Yeah. It's uh, you know part of being a good human being and being on it. It's true. Which is something that yeah. I mean, there's there's many. You know what the funny thing is? The most successful people in the wine industry are like m- fast. Yeah. Like you send them a text, you get an answer. You send them an e- email, you get a response. You say a date and time, you're there. Yeah. Because if not, you're not going to be successful in life. You know, if you need investors to start a company or a business or if you are employing people or if you're doing paperwork or legal, because all, all of those things come into play when you are running and operating any type of business. And Sean and For Ellen sure. and Sig, I'm sure you all can agree. And anybody listening to that, this podcast, it's true. You I'm know? pouring wine while you talk. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, Sean and I were kind of, because you didn't tell us in advance what uh, you wanted to whine about. So we were coming up with all I our didn't own know wines. I this morning. <laughs> Or what we wanted to whine well, about. We, we were, we, yeah, we we were coming up with all sorts of stuff to whine about, and and you were normally we're bringing our guest wine, but since I mean it would be coming from you anyway, anyway yeah. so Save the uh, trip. he surprised us with a, a Nebbiolo, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell us so, about? Yeah, the... so you can tell us about the wine for once. Ooh. 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 What, are what are we drinking? What are we drinking? drinking? Ooh, what it's is backwards this? day. It's mm. backwards day. Oh my gosh. Well, if this is a little wine that comes mm. from... Oh, that smells great. Doesn't that smell beautiful? Wow. Mm. It's from... This has the roses. It does. This mm-hmm. that they, they add some in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's rose the, wine. I mean, so many people... I'm sure someone will write in with a wine question saying, "Do when people say it has notes of tangerine and rose, does do, uh, how many do they add? And we'll be like, so many. So many. Tons. Tons. Um, so many tangerines. Tons. So you know where Switzerland is, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So basically, this is the closest region to Switzerland. Uh, comes from the north, northernmost, uh, northwesternmost region of Italy, uh, Valtellina Superiore in Lombardia, uh, in the Alps. Wow. And what is very special and unique, a lot of the valleys in the Alps run north to south. Hmm. The Valtellina runs east to west. Huh. Okay. And so think about that. Does that help bring in some ocean breeze? Or? Close, close. There's a lake, a lake that's nearby. Oh, Geneva? Uh, no, is it Como? I, yeah. I, I know Lake Como. Lake Como. Oh. Lake Como. So they have So a, if they run east-west, then they could be south-facing. Bravo. Uh-huh. Bravo. Hey, Bravo. Uh-huh. Bravo. I wonder who taught me about wine. Oh. He's sitting right there, Greg oh, Ricondos. Hey. It, yeah, we're, I think maybe your your geography teacher north yeah. south would have gotten that one. <laughs> Credit to your schooling. Yeah. So yeah, it's on the north side and it's facing south. And when you're there, like it's very. It's, it's, you're when you're there, you're on these terrace vineyards, and these wow. these, these terraces go back to. Thousand years, oh, okay. Wow, what? like the days of the Celtics and all that sort of stuff. That's um, like Jesus drank that wine. 
Yeah, and uh, you look on the other side, and the south side's all forest, all woodland. Not forest, uh, woodland. And it has the, the like, Ellen, correct? Absolutely, 100%. The cooling influence from the lake that mm-hmm. comes through. And you could be there in January, and your feet might be in snow. Mm-hmm. But you'll be wearing a T-shirt, kind of like, you know, skiing or whatever. Yeah. It's like, you know, on, on the vines. This place is, uh, wow. I've been to almost every single wine region on the face of the planet. And I will tell you there, this place ah, touches your heart, wow. touches your soul. You're there. You're like, oh my God, yeah. this is like, it, it's, 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 it's emotional. Yeah. It's a very special place hmm. and it's beautiful. You see the snow capped mountains all around you, even, even in the summertime, I was yeah. in the summertime yeah. and the work that goes into these terraces. Cause sometimes they're, they're terraces. Yeah, I was going to so, ask like how, like, are they having to are carry they? dirt up the hill as it slides down sometimes? They have, they, have, they have to carry the rocks and every year they have to repair the different wall, the different walls. Oh, it has the, like in the Duro where they make exactly. the the Potomares, the Duoro, salt. exactly. Yeah. This is the only other area. They this put is the walls most... in the side of the mountain so exactly. it doesn't slide down. Exactly, wow. exactly. Wow. This is the only other place. Duoro and uh, Valtellina are the closest in beauty. And people say the same thing when they go to Duoro. It's like, wow, they're blown away. The places the only... I need to go. <gasps> I know. You know, go get that passport stamped, well, Ellen. What are you waiting for? Southwest is going to take on. us there. <laughs> the Southwest. It's like, it's like 14 layovers and it changes, flight changes. Can we cheers? Because I want to oh, taste cheers. this. Yes. Oh, I already, oops, just cheers kidding. I saw nothing. <laughs> cheers. Mmm. 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 Ooh. Muy delicioso. Oh, that's fantastic. This is uh, made by, let's see that on the front of the label, there's these two mm. guys on the bottom. That is uh, oh, yeah. little guys. Faso hey, little guys. and Birba. Faso and Birba. The tall Are they guys, real? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the tall guy is Faso uh-huh. and the short guy is Birba. And these two guys, like, they're from the region, mm-hmm. and they, I mean, they're from there. And they were always doing harvests and everything, and they're like, oh, you know, like, there's these big companies that you probably may know that bring, that make wine that come to the Valtellina. Mm-hmm. I'll just, you know, that, I won't say the names of them. <laughs> but, uh, but, Ooh, uh, shade. No, wine shade. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> But uh, they're like, oh, you know, like, they're, the, the quality of the farming isn't really up to par. And they went to analogy school. They came back. Back to their native region, they went to, to school in um, in uh, in uh, Valdobbiadene, which is a very important school in Italy, one of the best schools for winemaking. Come back and they make the wine on the bottom of this church for like practically f- like nothing because like they had no money, yeah. and they're all piecemeal together, all these little pieces, like one hectare here, one little there. And they go from like elevations of like 400 meters, to, like 650 meters of elevation. This wine sees no new oak. This large. Uh, bote for uh, 12 months. Wow. Dirupi. Is that the name of the wine or the, the winery? Or the... That's the name of the winery. Okay. And so dirupo means steep in Italian. Mm. Dirupi is, or uh, cliff also, cliff. Mm-hmm. And dirupi is like plural for many oh. steep cliffs. Oh. And so Dirupi is the name of the winery. Uh, Valtellina Superiore is the appellation, and this is just it's a the... DOCG. Ma, molto bene, Ellen. Parla bene. I'm reading mm. the. I'm, okay. re- I'm reading the label. <laughs> she, good reading. Uh, good reading. Oh, is that a good. Picasso Ellen doodle? Like the... it, it does feel very Picasso. Exactly. It looks it like a tattoo. Picasso doodle. Do you want to know the story on that? Yes. Uh, I couldn't believe that this is what they said to me, and so. I was like, I was like, so hey, what's up with the label? Is this? Like, they're like, oh, we went. The, oh my god, you guys! If you met Faso and Birba, you'd be blown. Oh, I, I could show you videos right now. Of these guys. <laughs> oh my god. The, the, okay, these guys are like the Arno Roberts of the Valtellina. Oh okay? yeah, I love Arno Roberts. Because these guys, are the, you go all over Valtellina, and these guys, everybody loves them. These guys are like, man. Oh, yeah, okay. Who's Arno? Oh, uh, uh, they're like Lake County. Like they do like a trousseau, which is fantastic, mm-hmm. and they do like a lot of like more obscure varietals. But they're like kind of rock stars in Northern Very California. Hip. Very hip, yeah. Well, everywhere. Every, I mean, you yeah. go to Manhattan, oh. you go to Chicago, you go to the oh. best places yeah. here in L.A. And... But where's the actual winery for Anna Roberts? Yeah. Uh, is it in Lake County? Is it up north, or is I it down here? I believe they make the wine in Sonoma County. I think so. That's what I thought. Punch Down Cellars. Last time I checked, although they may have changed, I'm although that's that. where they're based out of. I know mm-hmm. that you know that you see them. In Hillsburg and all that a lot of times. So anyhow, and these guys are like Basso is like so much life and so and Birba, these guys are awesome and the wines have so much energy. 
and they're, yeah. they're great. Is this a new wine for you then that you're ripping or? Uh, yeah, this I have, is a brand new wine, you guys. This is a new release that new we release. haven't even seen. But I've been following this wine for almost seven years. Really? And I waited almost two years to bring this wine in. Wow. This is like so what's something... the, the story on the label? You... Oh God, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I got disrupted with the. So thank you, Ellen, for keeping us on point. My my, my, it's my, my job here. My wife Ellen also keeps me on point. So mm-hmm. Ellen, it's thank the job you, of Ellen's of the world. Ellen's of the world. <laughs> you know, it's the cross. That Keeping us, bear. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about to say, you, yeah, not always keeping it on the straight, but depending on which island, but <laughs> da, 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 making bad word jokes now. Um, so they went to go see their graphic designer guy, and he's like, they're, they're, these guys are like talking about what their whole identity, philosophy, ideology of what they're doing. And I guess like the designer was like moving the mouse like on the on the screen, mm-hmm. and, and, and Fass was like, Wait, stop. What is that? that stop. That, that, that. <laughs> and he's like, that's the mouse that I just, he's like, no, but that's it. That's it right there. Uh-huh. And I was like, really? They're like, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to myself, the graphic designer must have been like, wow, this is the easiest is money I've ever made. <laughs> it really does look like one of the Picasso doodles. <laughs> yeah. Like, Zig, check this out. Did you see? <laughs> so Does it? Wait, yeah. wait, that's it. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Like, he's like, he's like, that'll be five thousand yeah. yeah. <laughs> dollars. That's so oh, yeah. I wonder God, how much so you, they ended up getting charged for. It. Yeah. Well, they make the wine in the bottom of the church. I don't think they got that much. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How long has it been around for? Like ten years or seven years? Yeah, like maybe nine years, and it started like super small. They just got the Trebi Kiri Award this last year, uh-huh. though they have been gaining popularity more and more and more. Like in Italy, there's this um, Raya, call it, it's like NBC, it's like ABC, it's like a big deal in mm-hmm. Italy. Their head broadcaster came to visit them in the vineyards. They brought the whole television crew wow. rappelling off of the cliffs <laughs> with the whole crew. And they have to have insurance waivers. And in order to go there, you have to be harnessed in. Just, oh, wow. just you know. Wow. It, these guys are, their star is rising. Right. And I'm and, amazed this is 2014 because yeah. like, I feel like in Nabiolo normally you have to wait. Like we drank, uh, you would sent us the uh, uh, Azalea, uh, the Azalea and it was like, I was like, this is so young or at least for a, a Nabiolo, but it was like 2010 or 11. Or uh, I think it was the 12. Okay, it was maybe it was also very young, yeah. but this doesn't. This is feels already the tannins are more balanced. Yeah, sandy soils, mm. sandy soils. Any grape anywhere in the world, whether you're in Sardinia, whether you're in the Santa Rita Hills, whether you're in France or in Piemonte or, or in Valtellina or whatever, if you've got sandy soils, you're gonna have a wine that's much more gentle and er, mm. um, elegant and softer on the palate. Interesting. Always lifted aromatics. Interesting. I wonder and what wonder does it have something to do with the about. drainage or Yeah. And well here's the thing. These these are things that I hope they never figure out. Hmm. You know, like everybody always wants to say, Oh, because of A, B, and then C. Everything wants to be like super scientific and like, well, why does the wine have rose petal and that this and, that <laughs> and all this other stuff, right? It just happens. Yeah. You know, they don't you know that they, they, it's they, part of the beauty of the wine. Yeah. I'm already like doing like stereotypical Italian yeah. gesture you and have drinking to, this. To speak I'm like, Italian. The beauty. Elena. <laughs> the beauty of this wine. <laughs> but it, but the, but to, to, the if you wanted to be like uh, have the like the most correct answer, it would be the drainage. That okay. would be the most correct sort scientific of thing. sort yeah. of boring yeah. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Drainage. Yeah. It's because the wine's fucking happy. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> if you your see... left brain, it's because of drainage. If your right brain, it's because the mystery. You know. You, you know the <laughs> is other that right? Thing? Right yeah. brain. Yeah. Right yeah. brain's artistic. Um, left brain is. Yeah, because they analytical. say the left-handed people are the more artistic. Although I've known a lot of uh, left-handed know. people who right. are a lot more analytical. But like. Left brain being creative or left I brain being? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, wait, no, wait. Okay, no. I it was right brain. No, I don't know. I'm no, gonna... I think right by brain is supposed to be more creative. Gregory, you have a, you have a, you have a, do, you, do, you... do you know about this? So, I, what would yeah. you bring to a party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, save me, Ellen. I'm yeah. like, wait, what is right brain and left brain? Right, okay, so going to a party, that's a really great question, you know, and I get asked questions like this all the time, like, oh, what's your favorite one, best yeah. wine, this and that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it's like, it depends on your mood and the situation and the Boom. people Boom. and everything. Boom. All of that, all of that. If you're going to the beach, dude, bring fresh white rosé bubbles, yeah. you know, you're not going to bring hearty bubbles red. Bubbles is like my safe yeah. answer for anything. People are like, what do I pair with this? I'm like, just, just something bubbly. Yeah. But what if you're bring going to a holiday party and it's cold? I mean, here we are in the lovely... 
Los Angeles. Yeah. So it's nice. But it's let's say, for instance, <laughs> it's freezing. Let's out say, there. for instance, you're going to the Sierra foothills or some place, mm. a cabin with your grandmother and some uncle friends. And they don't and, appreciate wine. Yeah. They don't know shit they don't about, give a wine. Crap about wine. They're like, why are you wasting your life reading yeah. about wine and drinking yeah. all the time? Yeah, get a job. <laughs> But you want to party with your Get family. A job. You're just drinking. Yeah, you're ready yeah. to party with your family. Yeah. You want to bring something that you want to drink, but they'll enjoy too, even if they don't appreciate it. That they'll might might help them understand why you love wine. What would you bring to that situation? Well, I think Ellen um, is on the right track. The Ravenswood. Well, not specifically <laughs> yeah. with the Ravenswood, though, with Zinfandel. Yeah, um, it's juicy, but it's interesting, and I love Zinfandel. It's so kind of like a group hug wine, you know. <laughs> it's sort of like everybody can sort of like, hey, you know, yeah, it's like, exactly. hey, okay, there's something know. in there for everybody. <laughs> it's group like, hug yeah. wine. It's like, okay, come here. Uh, all right, like, yeah. you smell a little bit. It's all right. <laughs> I have to write. Oh. I have to write that down. Yeah, like, we can all along. get along. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You can start singing "Kumbaya." You know. Yeah. I have turned more of my friends with with Zens than like yeah, like my my best friend. He just always made fun of me for wine, yeah. and then he bought. So, well, he bought. The, it's also endeared to me because I got him into it. He bought it because he was like it had a dark label, the dark name, and he's not even as goth as me. But he, um, and then he was like, Cigar. "This is really yummy." He's channeling you, channeling you. But see, like in a wine bar situation, Zinfandel usually is not the choice. People usually do not want Zinfandel. They always say Pinot. Well, that's they always people... say Pinot. That's they all they no want. Idea it's because Simon... I mean. so like, I like okay. a really heavy, deep Pinot. I have two theories. Or a Malbec. It's A, <laughs> yeah, it's like... sideways for the Pinot, and B, pink, or, or the, the white Zen that made people... People don't realize, so many people, they're like, oh, that's a pink wine, right? Zen, I don't want that. I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, white Zinfandel, it's... yeah. Well, well, they just hear Zinfandel, and they only know it as white Zinfandel, so they're like, ugh. The, the other thing I would say to that is is getting people to drink more Syrah, dare I say. Mm, yeah. You know why? No. Is because because everybody drinks Pinot, right? But let's just, just I'm going to just gonna put it out there. A lot of Pinot isn't really Pinot, okay? What? A lot of the Pinot. Well, there's so many clones. Whoa. Expose. For, forget the clones. Oh. Clones Expose. does not matter. So what do you mean? You're just saying it's straight up different grapes. No, I'm so, well, actually, in, actually, well, you know, under California law, that it only has to be like, 85% right. varietal. You can throw in other stuff, which some people do. But let's just say it's 100% Pinot, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just not even think that you're mixing other grapes. The clone situation, I'll talk about that in a second. But 100% Pinot, why is it not Pinot Noir? Because it's overripe, mm. overextracted. Well, in the U.S. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> there's Oops. a lot of French versions of Pinot Noir that are quote unquote modernized, and there's this. Oh, whole... I hear Grand Grand Cru Burgundy now is like super oaky and super like. Um... Well, it's always had oh, okay. oak, but right? but like more more new now world than style. Ever, right, more now than ever before. And so, what does all that mean? Well, they're they're doing it to get great ratings, great press, yeah, and they're trying to sell to make. It uh, viable in the marketplace. Yeah. And so, with that being said, the wines that people are drinking are really big and powerful and muscular. And that's, that's not what Pinot's supposed to be. That's not sure. what Pinot's supposed to be. We know what Syrah, the Northern Rhone, was like this crossroads between it gives you the elegance and the lift and the perfume that you would get in a Pinot, but with the power and the muscle that maybe you would get out of a Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. And so, and, 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 and like 15 years ago, Syrah was like predicted to be the juggernaut grape of the world. Yeah. And everybody went planting Syrah, and then they just destroyed, there's so much crap Syrah made. Oh. No That's way. why you see so many blends nowadays. Have oh. you noticed that you see everything's a red blend? Yeah. Well, they had to find a different way to market that. Yeah. And that's they Syrah. can't market it as Syrah. They market it as a red blend. Right. I'm like, oh, red blend. Uh. So you think they're kind of like over farming and like amping up the Pinot Noir and not making it its true expression? They're, they're yeah. Absolutely. Are you speaking so of, of, of yeah, so Pinot grown it's like, anywhere? Yeah. So therefore, it's like overshadowing other grapes that might necessarily fill that that role. And that's because uh, you people that are doing it want to sell the wine. And sometimes people that are doing it are driven by different reasons. Some people are like, oh, I went 
went to Burgundy. And you're like, yeah, you went, to, you oh, know, you went to Burgundy. Yeah. Like, you, but you're not in Burgundy. You're not in Burgundy. Do you know what Pinot, yeah. I think, fulfills what I think Pinot you. should be that I'm getting more and more into is Spätburgunder. I'm getting so into Spätburgunder because yeah. to me, I'm like, this is what Pinot should be. like. And maybe it's the cold nature of it. Maybe it's how they're making it in Germany. But I'm like, this is like Pinot I want to yeah, drink. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Tastes like delicious cherry Coke and I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Spätburgunder is uh, very, uh, nowadays, because... 15 years ago, it was not the same thing. You have to mm. consider global warming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's yeah. getting warmer. And also technology. Spitbergunder, for our listeners, it's what they call Pinot Noir if it's made in Germany. Correct, correct. Uh, they also call it that in northeastern Italy and uh, oh. in parts of Austria. Ooh. Where they also speak German? Is that it? Or? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> just checking. Is Blau Frankish a clone of Pinot, or is that just straight up Pinot? Blau Frankish is a Do you know? different grape. Blau Burgunder is Oh, that's also a Pinot, Pinot Noir. Noir. Oh, okay, that's yeah. what I'm thinking Blau Frankisch yeah. is a different totally grape. Totally different grape. Okay, yeah. In, that's, in Austria, and Blau, Blau Burgunder is I was trying to remember the of Pinot. And then Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc are biotypes of Pinot Noir, you know? Just like Pigato is a biotype of Vermentino. Vermentino. They're like the same. Just like, you know, there's Grenache Blanc, Grenache yeah. Gris. But it's where the pagato, like like the skins, like do that little speckled thing mm-hmm. from like a second during ripening, that's and that's right. it. That's the only. But time it's you the know. same. It's the same grape. Grape, but it's weirdly behaves in that weird way. It, it, and but they're different. You know, they're different. You you, you have to. It's like religion. You know, if you're Christian, you're you know, Muslim, or you're Jewish, or you're this or that. You're not. You don't want to change somebody's idea of what they're thinking, right? Because the if you talk to the science people, they might say no. It's the same yeah. damn thing. But if, yeah. when you're when you're there. Yeah. Like you see it, you're like, there is a difference, and the people that have been there the whole, you Thing, taste the wines yeah. are yeah. different. Exactly. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That's where that whole thing about science, like, you know what? I hope we don't know all the reasons yeah. because right. you know yeah. what? Yeah. It's like. <laughs> Well, I mean, I feel like cooking is like that. Like some people can cook and they can be following the exact same. And I feel like baking, especially. Well, I oh yeah, love baking, baking for sure. But I'm like people. There, there. You people can be following the exact same recipe, and maybe it's the flour they're using. Maybe it's the love they put into it. But people that can bake well, <laughs> the temperature, the time of day, can yeah. bake. Yeah, no, pasta. really, pasta. Think about this. Flour, oh. water, so many things. Ooh, water. Or just love. Water. No, no, no. Think Instincts, knowing how to work the dough with your hands makes a difference. Uh, like, uh, No, no, it has nothing. Okay, think about this. I, I remember talking with Ario Batali about this. Pasta is the pasta. Yeah. Where are you making it? Because the water the water. Are you water? Well, New they York, say that New about York New York, York pizza. Water? Yeah, New York water, pizza, San yeah. Francisco water, L.A. Water, water, water from different places in Italy, yeah, yeah, mineral yeah. content. Yeah. I mean, these are... The bad. weather, the humidity in the flour you're using, like, that'll change it. Like Yeah, like beers like that, And too, that's why people and, are like, baking's yeah. an exact science. I'm like, but you have to know how to use your instincts to work with what you have, because, right. like, things kick in. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, you know, wine, food, it almost... The, the quality well, no, the quality will always should be good, right? Though what will heighten and take it to the next level is the company and the people that oh, you're around. Yeah. yeah. Because you can you can go to French Laundry or Per Se and you could be with the most dull people in the world and be like, dude, this meal sucks. Uh-huh. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> you guys like, you should, can have, is our like, wine with an H actually about people who try and like use too much science? Is that our because yeah. I just realized we haven't like whined at all. We're yeah. just like <laughs> that's okay. I guess it's our wine. We can have a lot. We can go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah, too you much can, science, or and also just like having good company. Yeah, because I really like, like that too. Because right I feel now. like I've been in like very nice situations. I'm like this should be amazing. I should be having the time of my life, but I'm not. And I don't. And that this can is be like, the problem with going to professional tastings when you're like running around with your spit cup yeah. and you're just like, I want to appreciate everything, but it's really hard in this environment and with all these people in the crowd and like. Well, that's the worst place to. Taste I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say like uh, usually tastings are not very much. The only reason not, why I even go is just to say hi to people. Yeah, you know, and because I sometimes have to be there. But yeah. like, you're like, well, you know, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, yeah. I, I, and I have make no point of like hiding that. Yeah. And now, mm. I guess now, <laughs> now it's public. Um, dun, dun, dun. I'm curious though, like, what do you want like consumers to know about you as a wine importer? Like, what do you feel like people don't know about what you do, and like what they should know, and what do you feel like your role is in terms of consumer? That's a great question, Sean. I really Thanks. appreciate you asking that. And. <laughs> So we've we rehearsed got more. This. We rehearsed this. <laughs> yes, we also, I want to play What's in a Glass with you at some oh, point. Oh, my God. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Answer that question. I love that segment. Yeah. Well, I think 
the people need to know what's, what's, in, the what's in the glass. So we, be... We've already refilled it a few times. So. This is good wine. So. But, muy, muy but bueno. answer Sean's question. I'm really good at sidetracking things. Don't let me. <laughs> there's so there's so many angles here going on. I love it. This is like uh, this is awesome. This is cosmic. Cosmic. Oh. So I would say to the consumer, to the people out there, is that any wine that you see that we represent and bring on is something that if you came to my home, I would pull the cork on and enjoy with you. Mm -hmm. I will not bring a wine that is not something that I would have on the table with you and that I would like love and enjoy. And all of the wines are made by people, families, not corporations or companies or anything like that. They're like families so like people like real people like i like i'm yeah. reading up on all the wines you've given us there's always like stories behind the you you, you give personal yeah. information about For all sure. of them and i'm appreciate that because it's like it gives you a little more context to imagine and, where the wines are and coming gratitude from. as well because i would not be where i am today without all of the great people that i've had the privilege to work with and that includes you, Sean. Oh my gosh, I'm blushing. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm fanning him like <laughs> Because you know, you know, like um, on on the uh, on the English pound, he says, you know, it's like a, we stand on the on the, on the shoulder of uh, heroes, mm -hmm. you know. And it's what, what you know what this is like. Don't ever forget where you came from, because a lot of people end up at third base and think they got there hitting a single. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, and then so many people forget to remember who was there before how you even got there, why you're even there. Like, for instance... I mean, maybe they hit a double, but, like, you know... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm into the baseball metaphors. Yeah. But, but yeah, you know, normally you got to wait for some other people to help you around around the bases. Oh, yeah. But, for instance, the profession of sommelier, right? right. Sommelier, like, when He's I was... He's doing quotes right now. <laughs> when I was He's a, doing air quotes. Yeah, air quotes. Air yeah. quotes of sommelier, yeah. yeah. When, when, when I was a sommelier, and I was, like, at a party or out... You know, or somewhere, and, mm -hmm. and somebody asked me, "What do you do?" And my family were like, "Is you know, is that curable? Like, are you, <laughs> yeah, like, are you okay?" Yeah. It's like now everybody's now a, a psalm. Everybody, yeah. everybody's a psalm. It's just like my friends try and introduce me true. that way sometimes because they don't have a better word for it. Because I don't work as a psalm right now, but they're just like, I'm just like, I know a lot about wine. And people that are like psalms that have never worked in a damn restaurant call yeah. themselves that. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not one. I'm not. <laughs> But yeah, it's, there's, it's hard to, there's a lot of people who do a lot of stuff with wine that has nothing to do with selling it on the floor of a restaurant. The, it's like there's not a good word to explain what they do. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. And, and the, the other thing I'd say maybe to the consumer part is that I have had that privilege because of the people that have took, taken a chance on me. And mm -hmm. I'm, I, I worked my ass off as a young you guy, like coming up through the ranks. And I was always the youngest guy. Like wherever I worked, and it was super intimidating because when you're working in Michelin starred one, two, three star Michelin building, writing grand award lists, best award lists, London, New York, Las Vegas, San Francisco, on an international stage at the highest levels, you got to bring the game, and you got to bring it every day, every single day, and you got to like keep pushing yourself because you know some of these guys that are working with you could be your father, and I when I look at them in the eye, I want to be like I'm bringing it. And I'm bringing to the highest level because sometimes I, I, I knew, they're like, why the hell is this guy here? So to the mm -hmm. consumer part is that I have been through the fire and what I am bringing to you is my, it's, I wouldn't say it's my life's work because I don't, I, like, I hope I'm going to be around for many years. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot but, to do. But it's, um, it's, it's for you and, it, and it's of service. It's a value and it's, it's, it's really, it's really in my heart, really what I believe in, and, and, and know that it comes from a place of good. That's it. Answer your question. Right. Wow. No, that's a great that's a great answer to the, <laughs> that question. <clears throat> it's, what's in the glass? Oh, oh yeah, what's oh, in the yeah. glass? We um, can play what's in the glass so our <laughs> our, our listeners can like experience or that. imagine. Um before we can I ask you really quick, have you had Nebu this is Nebbiolo we're drinking, correct? Uh yes. have you had the Mexican ones? I'm curious if you have had tried any. I, I, I've I, only tried the one and it was the one I had was great. I, I did have a Nebbiolo recently, a friend of mine, um, uh, Daniel Grzyski, uh was the former corporate wine director for all of Michael Mina restaurants. Uh, they just they have this Mexican concept uh, in San Francisco, um, and he invited me to come over and taste a bunch of wines. And there's some really cool uh, wines that we tasted. A few Nebbiolos that that he that he brought on actually, and uh, really inspiring and cool to see what they're doing. My only thought yeah, it was a completely different style, but it was is it was good to like look at Alianico. Oh yeah, you know, I love Alianico. 
like so, like thicker skinned because like let's just be realistic, right? Like Nebbiolo, where does this this comes from the Alps? Yeah, yeah. But like Barolo, Piemonte, you know, it's like and I heard something about like. Nebbiola being a highly planted varietal in Italy, I don't know who what gave that information, but as not uh, the Wikipedia or whatever, yeah, 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 yeah it's it's not possible because it's <laughs> really. I was confused oh. about the, that because it would be Sangiovese is number one for the red. I, without even like knowing yeah. that, I know that. And number be. two, it would for red, it would probably be Montepulciano, and then oh really. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because like you go to the go to the Abruzzo, mm-hmm. you know, and then after that, you probably might be might even say like a uh, Nero Davola because you look at what Sicily, like the major wine producing areas, Sicily produces like, you know, a god awful amount of wine. Right? Really, yeah. Now, Nebbiolo is only grown in Piemonte for the most part, and uh, Lombardia, and then you find it. Um, planted a little bit in Sardinia. Lies, actually, lies. Is, Whatever website that was, oh. lies. Yeah. It, well, I, I, but you know, here's the you other. You guys thing. go back a few episodes. If we say <laughs> something about Nebbiolo, you guys, I've being, been wrong. It's we were, and we're oh, okay with admitting that because well, people make mistakes. Can we, here's the other thing in Italy <laughs> is like my grandfather said this. And then the other guy mm. across the street, my grandfather said this. It's like, uh, yeah. like the stories over time. It's like, uh, but yeah, anyways, I hope that Mexican wine keeps growing. And the only thing I wish, though, is that we're, it were less expensive. Oh, because oh, yeah. I don't know how much this was. She got it in Mexico. So well, I it's, don't know. It's a little too expensive when you consider that you can buy imported wine from Italy or France or Spain or Austria or Germany or anywhere out there and it's a fraction of the cost mm. and that also goes the same for California wine a lot of times I would agree with that Very good. I don't have a lot of experience buying Mexican wine but I'm like Californian wine is like it's so and, and yes right now I'm like everybody please spend all your money on Napa Cab but yeah. hot Support. damn that shit's expensive it's <laughs> like, so expensive up there the Napa Cab <laughs> I mean, it just is. It's it's not necess- I mean, it's delicious wine. I'm not gonna lie. I've spent you know what I would say way it's too much a, on a, some vintage. But <laughs> let me say this: that Napa Valley is the most expensive wine region in America for sure. And those really expensive Napa wines are not the wines that need the support or the help. Right. The people that need the support or the help are the people that you don't know. They're the little guys that aren't in the wine shop that maybe or, you know, the, the they're, they're like because they don't have that widespread network of distribution. Yeah. Those little dudes that, that are making honest good wine and maybe it's a little bit more expensive than Sonoma County, mm-hmm. but it's not $500 a bottle coming in some ridiculous oversized bottle from this in like this box that's the size of an elephant. It's, it's like wrapped in like gold flake. Yeah, yeah those aren't yeah, or even has gold flakes in it. Yes. Those aren't the wines that need your help. The wines that need your help are the wines that are made by pe- like real people families like and not some guy or gal or that you know was alpha in whatever industry <laughs> they came from and yeah. has like three homes and second trophy wife and a Learjet <laughs> oh, and no. it's like oh you know it's like I hired the best winemaker the best vineyard guy the best this and yeah, yeah. That, that, those. we want the guy who <clears throat> flies southwest in. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> well, southwest our new sponsor <laughs> uh, <laughs> and no that wasn't it's a hilarious. reference to just I uh, because you said the Lear jet, so I was. No, it was no, it's not. Jet. Should we do a little what's in the glass? Yeah, let's do what's in the glass. What's um, in the glass? So, what's in the glass? We like start, we look at it. Like, what color is look this? Look at it. It's red. It's definitely red. It's definitely red. It's Whoa. definitely red. It's definitely the wine is clear. It's red. It's a uh, medium concentration. Mm-hmm. It's got a little bit of a tawny garnet rim, too. Yeah, I would say that. Uh, then we take a whiff. There's a little bit of rim barrier. I, I mean, these glasses are tough. Yeah, though. I know. I'm like, these are the worst. I can't even like, you there's no way time. you can analyze tears in this. These are beautiful glasses. These these are the glasses that friends drink out of. Uh-huh. Fuck yeah. Cheers, Cheers, to hey, friends, cheers to friends. Another fun. Cheers to friends. Cheers. And family. These are the glasses that Ellen's family for who knows how many generations, but yeah. at least my grandma drank from. Hey, mm. Here's to our grandmas, guys. Here's to here's our to grandmas. grandmas. Cheers, grandma. What do you guys get on the nose? I do get that that rose petal thing. I get for so sure. much I know, the rose I, just petal. You said, rose yeah. petal and dried cherry. Dried cherry. Yeah. What are like a pepper spice? Maybe a little white pepper. Mm. 
And there's also yeah, like white little... pepper to me yeah. is so floral. Like I didn't yeah. understand the white pepper references till I went out and bought some so I could yeah. pass my wine test. I was like, I need to know what this smells like. I was like, oh, that's so floral. Yeah, there's a little bit of underbrush, like sage, rosemary sort of action going on. Mm. It's like it's some like autumn seeding. autumn leaf to me, like and, uh, dried leaf. There you dried go. leaf, yeah. Dried is, boom, there you go. Dried cherries, yeah. dried leaf. When you think of color, think, you know, for red red wines, you can go black, blue, or red. So this is definitely into the red yeah. spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then from that, you would say, well, is the is the nature of the fruit, is it ripe, underripe, overripe? This is definitely not overripe. This is just dried <laughs> fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's ripe, but then yeah. the, the quality is, is of a dried nature, like dried potpourri, rose petal, dried plum skin, uh, that sort of nature, dried yeah. cherries, mm -hmm. yeah. that sort of nature. Maybe a hint of like cedar almost. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. Maybe that's the potpourri feeling that yeah. just makes me think sweet. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. You guys have great palates, man. You know, you, you can come and uh, help write uh, the lovely, uh, you know, text sheets that we write. We, we literally I do that every week. I would do that She's for available. You. <laughs> I am. I will do that for you. <laughs> I love it. I love I'd it. gladly do that for you. That's yeah. awesome. Mm. Um, and how does it taste? It's, it, your glasses are almost empty, I guys. Know, right? I might. I have to drink it again to find <laughs> out. I, Let I, me just try one more. Do you guys I usually mean, finish the, the bottle by the half of the segment? No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, I would say this is this. Well, the first thing that jumped out at me is like this has like great acid to it. Yeah, great acid. Mm. It's like uh, it's great a, freshness. And great vibrosity. freshness. Yeah, it was definitely. It's different than every other Nebbiolo I've had. Zingy. It brings it's, the party mm -hmm. to the, you know. Party. I was gonna call it sharp. It's it's a sharp wine. It's like sharp. It's stressed sharp. It's like think about where it comes from though. The it's northern, cold. yeah, cold, it's cold. Yeah. cold. That's why it's, it's the, that's got the acids. I the also fresh. get like a little bit of like mid palate tannin too. Absolutely. On that, I definitely get the tannins, but the tannins are uh, they're not like jumping out at me as much no, as that. Normally, no. when I drink, I think never. the acid, but the like azalea, me it's when balanced, I drink that, we were yeah. just like tannin, tannin, tannin. Yeah, yeah no, this is the well balanced. The acid to tannin kind of ratio to me is really balanced. It tastes silky. to me more like silky, yeah. silky, silky tannin. It's silky. Fine. It's it's elegant. This is a wine that it's 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 royal. It's like I drink this wine. Is this Grace oh, Kelly oh, Nebbiolo? Oh. <laughs> this is Grace yeah. Kelly Nebbiolo. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like got the bright red lipsticks, bright cherry red yeah. lipstick, but it's got like refined uh, satin satin clothes on. This yeah. wine also has a little bit of cut to it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. A, that's why I was thinking sharp. It's like... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David Lynch, who wrote the book Vino Italiano, taught me that. He's like, this wine's got cut. You know? mm. like, I love that. It's got I'm a little use cut that. to it. Yeah. But like cut can almost mean like the finish is like cut short or no, oh, no, no, or no, no, like, no. no. cut acid. Tannin okay, sort of that's cut. that's yeah. the kind of cut you're yeah. talking about. Okay, no. I think that's, that's what when I, I was using But I was the like, for some sharp. reason, I'm like, I, I think of cut. I'm like, and just it just uh, yeah. cuts yeah. off. But yeah, that's because you're you know you were in Hollywood. Cut, <laughs> you know, <laughs> action. You know, hold it, <laughs> hold it. I like that as a drink. <laughs> I got that one from you. Hold now, it. Now, now, now when I take people's pictures, I'm like, oh yeah, hold it, hold it, fierce. Give it to me. Yes, go. Work it. Uh, show, yeah. show me that magic. Show me that magic. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting the cherry too. I'm getting yeah. all the stuff where uh, you the, smell on the yeah, nose is coming smell, through in the palate for the... sure. What would you eat with this? That's what I was just thinking. I know. Of. I was thinking that too. I was like picturing risotto immediately risotto. for some reason. Mm. Something truffles. Truffles. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. You know, perhaps you know you could even do fish in the sense of you know lobster risotto with English peas. Yeah, you know, that'd be great. A little bit of saffron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was but thinking like, like saffron risotto. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Or a mushroomy. You could also do pork tenderloin, you could do rabbit, you could do lamb. I like all of those. This is where yes. as a vegetarian I fall short. I'm like, I have no reference. Ugh. Fava beans. I mean, there, like, there's a lot of great more. Better with Nebbiolo dishes. than yeah. Chianti. <laughs> Couscous? I'm just quoting that. Yeah. <laughs> couscous, guys. What doesn't go with couscous? I hate couscous. It's cheese. a texture thing. Cheese. Cheese. Cheese, yeah. You know, yeah. light, soft cheeses. Like a lighter red sauce. Nothing I was almost too heavy. picturing some kind of garbanzo y kind of deal. Garbanzo. Like spiced garbanzos. I don't know. You, you know, another thing you could do sometimes. Because they have that earthiness yeah. to them. Garbanzos do to me. Yeah. Beautiful bread, olive oh, oil. I mean, mm -hmm. just relax. 
you know. Start it up. I mean, really, any restaurant with good bread, good butter, and good wine, I'm like, that's a five-star restaurant in my book. (laughs) But that's as a vegetarian who's not, like... But olive oil would be the thing because it's Italian. Right, yeah. 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 In Italy, you go, like, we're butter. I thought they, like, (laughs) don't don't they, like, saute gnocchi and butter sometimes? Northern Italy... I love butter so more much. Butter influence and yeah. then southern, central or southern, and you have to remember that it's surrounded by water. There's this restaurant called Calamara that just opened up that you know I think we helped influence the whole idea of menu. Mm-hmm. Cause, is this in San Francisco? Because um, it originally came from the Mina Test Kitchen, oh, and the, the cool. idea came from a conversation. Adam Sobel, who is the executive chef for the Mina Restaurant Group, we were actually were friends back in Vegas, back in the day. And uh, back in those days, there was this restaurant called Bartolotta Ristorante di Mare, and uh, they would have a plane from the wind go to the Mediterranean every two days and bring fresh fish. So wow. every day we had like fresh fish at the Bartolotta. And because the thing is, like when people think of Italian food, where they think pizza, pasta. Raviolis, they ne- like guys. It's surrounded by water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fish, okay? fish, fish. And when you go to all these different places, there's so many different types of varieties of fish. And we that we were talking because like we had done another Italian concept prior with with them, and we're like, remember Bartolotta? You know, you you just all these the different seas, all of that variety, and it was the most successful test kitchen that they did, hmm. and they launched it. Their first one is here in the Beverly Center, and they're gonna take it to other oh, wow. places. And uh, it, it, Italian food is very complex. Have you been to Italy yet? I, uh, I have. Did you I go? Have, I haven't I, been yet. We're, we're, we're I'm just picturing any kind are of you, like, Are you selling some wine in Italy? Okay. Marino Monferrato. As oh. a vegetarian. Also Gordon Ramsay shows the director of operations. We opened the wind together. He was our maitre d' of Alex. Oh, cool. It's a very small world. Very small world. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps flipping around. No. As a vegetarian, wait, let me, because I'm still, I'm so bad at pairing. I, I'm like, I was envisioning trying to picture this if I were eating like a, like a sauteed, like a uh, broccoli right. rab with like, Ooh. with like a balsamic, white balsamic vinegar on top. Would, would that seem like it would go? I love good? that. Can I, can I just, can I just like take the a, bitter green? Can, with I, just, the, can yeah. I just do a little bam do it, to do pick it. it up a yes. little? Like pick Emerald it up. Pick it up. A little morel mushrooms. Oh yeah, That'd or some porcinis, trumpets. Any kind of mushroom would be good with this. You know, because then 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 you can bring a little bit more protein to it, mm. and maybe you could do a little dried breadcrumbs on top. Oh yeah, with a little drizzle of parmigiano. Oh yeah, and a sprinkle of chili flakes, and boom, voila. Yeah. What do you think? That sounds Done. really good. Yeah. I'm that sounds amazing. I'm going home Andiamo. to Andiamo. I know, right? Mangia, mangia. Mangia, mangia. Mangia, mangia. Mangia, bambino, mangia. Mangia, bambino. Are oh. we making you guys hungry yet? I know, right? Are we hungry? Is this a wine or is it a food? I know, right? <laughs> we have to add a food element to the show. Yeah, Where maybe. we bring in like a, like a chef and they cook for us. I think we need to do that. I um, think Zig is going to be like, where is my plate? Yeah, uh-huh, you know? for well, sure. Zig, do you, pass, want, pass. Do you want some we, wine, Zig? We haven't Speaking offered you. Of, you yeah. sure? Yeah. Just. Just give Zig's him the bottle. Uh, just Zig's well, hydrating you know, over there. We've occasionally left him with our, our empty. But we tried. We try and bring Zig, and he refuses us so many times, though. Yeah, I know. Zig's so excited. whenever Zig's, he does drink, we're like excited. So say yes if you guy. want some, because we got some. Zig's yeah, the best. Zig's we're like peer pressuring him now. Yeah, um, everybody's are, doing is there, it. <laughs> hold on. I'm gonna. Is there stand a glass up. over there? Is and there, then I think we should. I think it might be time for lightning round. Oh, is it time for lightning? Isn't it crazy how quickly it goes? Time flies. Time flies. Thank you, thank you. Oh, look at that. Absolutely. Gregory found a cup right there. Yay. Perfect. It's like he's been in the studio before, oh you Oh, my guys. God. It's like I was, you know. He was well, born here. in spirit, your wines, which which are your metaphorical lifeblood, are, uh, have been here many times. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it yeah. all makes sense. I feel, I feel at home. Yeah. I, I feel uh, you're stuck, you well, you stuck, guys. You're stuck, guys. It's like I've been drinking your wines, and Sean has known them, and I never met you. But I'm like, oh, this is the kinds of things this person likes, and that tells me something about you. Like, I mean, just reading all the profiles of the wine producers and what you like and what seems to drive your taste, it's like it gives you at least some sort of a sense of like the person you're going to meet. And that yeah. the, you hired Sean, and I. And I've been listening Sean. to your lovely voice, and Sean. <laughs> I was like, so it's kind of like oh, we know bad. each other. A little bit. No, but it's so great what you're doing, you know, like with the combination of your history and like all the places you've worked and that you chose to kind of take on this next chapter and bring these wines. Because it's not easy to bring these wines, to no. to ship them here, to bring them here, to Just, put the yeah. book together. I mean, you and, and Ellen good, worked I've... so hard to, to bring these wines here. So you know. His wife, Ellen. Not yeah, me. his wife, Ellen. I've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> except for a drink them, yeah, which for, I mean is That's helpful. a huge part. We've talked about it. You've experienced And them, you're yeah. probably, I mean, I've seen on the spec sheets like your 
price points are not are great. Yeah, because we're a direct importer, yeah. distributor, the whole thing. You're like there's not multiple layers or tiers. Like that's another yeah. thing. It's just like there's no if you go buy it from another company. Like there's small yeah. companies like me out there that like awesome. garage yeast is kind of like yeah there's there, but there's people there's a, a lot of the wines that come into the united states that are imported coming through multiple layers right. and tiers yeah. and so there's it's, and you're the up. one guy yeah. going around and giving them yeah yeah so this is like as direct as it gets man it's I like do like, they bring boom. them down to the container and put them in there and they ship them put them, put them on a boat <laughs> Put him on a boat. Greg actually <clears throat> made this wine. He was clipping the grapes <laughs> and stomping your own feet. <laughs> you know what's so him. crazy? I was just at K and L. You know, I worked at K and L like a long time ago. I and like K&L. Right? And uh, I went to go see, you know, say hi to my friends and Trey, who's you know Clyde's son. He uh, had one of the bottles that I blended, <gasps> yeah. Noiro, oh. next to a bottle of Latash. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! On his desk, uh. and I'm like, dude. Yeah. I'm like, do it right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, can I take a picture of that? <laughs> That's awesome. And wow. Uh, for, for people out there that don't know, Wine Latash is one of the uh, the Grand Cru vineyards in Burgundy. It's fancy. Very it's expensive. In the, in, Muy expensive. In the Von Romane. I'm saying mm. it wrong. Hey, so if this That's is good. the lightning round. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were going to ask you some lightning round. Can I bring the thunder? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't. Put us, put us on the spot. I'm thunder. nervous. Sean, hold. <laughs> Hold my hand. Wait, are, is, is, oh, he's, are asking, you ready? he's asking us questions. He's asking us. <laughs> oh, shit. I know. Where it's were okay. you on July? Oh, no. oh, oh that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make that one up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Nailed yeah. it. Yeah. 20,000 points. Yeah. All right. What is your spirit animal? <laughs> <laughs> Giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Oh, I'm telling this. I'm telling this. I won million points. <laughs> cheetah. I'm a cheetah. Ooh, cheetah. I like that. I like, like that. that. I like That's that. very good. That's good. I mean, I'm yeah. getting older. I could be like, I'm a cougar, but I would have to have a young boyfriend. To... <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, next Too question. Too far away from cougar. Please. Uh, lightning round. Go ahead. What? Oh. I have a question. No, yeah. I. I, oh. okay. <laughs> I, I, I like, like no, no, really, I like it. Thunder. <laughs> yeah. like, no, bring, bring the thunder. thunder. I got a question. Yes. Yes. Here's a fun question. Yeah, do it. I, I think I, I'll ask you. I don't think I told you this one yet. Yeah. How long does it take? <laughs> take. How long does it uh, take grapes to grow on the uh, on the vine? Oh, I, how many days? How many days? How many days? Oh, it's I, a range. I have an answer about vines in general that it takes at least three years usually for them to be able to. That's produce true. But grapes. you mean like from bud break to yeah to like about harvest 100, about hundred days. Give or take, yeah. It's from like April to October. Yeah. A little bit more. Yeah. Is what, is what I got. Uh, yeah. 165 to 180. Yeah, is what, is what, yeah, right. I was terrible with math. <laughs> <laughs> but it's around 100. It's around 100, yeah. It's, because, about, like, it's less than 200. It's more than 100. You have like those like lower like yeah, sugar so, wines like so, they're picked early that so are like super it, acidic. So you can have like flowering in March, April. So I think if you want, like it would depend upon where, what grape. So like you can have March, April. Okay, great, awesome. So you have April, May, June, July, August, September. But then again, so that's seven months. Depends upon the grape varietal. Is it a white? Is right. it a red? Are you making sparkling wine? Are you, Rose. you know, whatever. So seven times three, technically you're almost like 200 days. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't know, man. It changes. <laughs> like it depends. So many. Sean so many likes to ask if questions you... with no answers. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I like to ask questions with uh, variable <laughs> answers. Yeah. I like it. You, you, you know, like, have you ever, like, answered or did that question, like, how many yellow M&Ms are there in the world? No. How many? No, I mean, it, like, it, you have to show your reasoning for your thoughts. That oh, seems yeah, like yeah, things yeah, yeah, they yeah. have uh, people do to out, pass like, how law many, school. Yeah. It's like sort of like those, like, well, how do you get the answer? You have yeah. to, like, well, because of X, Y, Z, and, like, na- 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 all the variables. And really, right? the like, answer, it's, it's the like, journey, not yeah. the answer that's important. But, like, one of our last guests, figured, like, like, broke it all down and got within oh range. Oh, my God. Which we is were it like how many yet, bubbles but... are there in a glass of champagne? And he like went through this whole process. He's like, "Well, I'm looking, I'm looking at the call, and then like, and then, but there's this variable of time." And he like freaking figured it out almost. <laughs> yeah, he almost got to like the exact. It was crazy. That it episode was amazing. Will... Has it not comes aired. out next week. Yeah, next yeah. Well, week. Well, no, it'll, it'll be, be out, out when you hear this Never one. Mind. The person who did <laughs> uh, the Phil Jackson, act, go back and listen to that was ball. Yeah, oh, Camille. Camille. Yeah, that, she's the best. That person, straight up, like she's just like huge kudos. Like yeah. Volstead, at who's this person? Well, Michael Jordan from downtown. I know. Right? Like, <laughs> listen <laughs> next week Nailed to uh, Phil Jackson's breakdown of the champagne bubbles because it was impressive. It was very impressive. The coach, yeah. former coach of the Lakers and the yeah Chicago Bulls. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Phil Augusta Jackson. Phil Augusta Jackson. I know. 
That's why you added the Augusta. Any, oh. Do you want to ask another lightning round question, or do you want to? Uh, I think you had more I questions than I did prepared. Oh. I mean, well, bring it. I was going to make okay. you, I was going to make you quiz us and like try and bring some. Try and bring some. But um, I, I have one more. Uh, I, can, I, I, I got I got I got a question for okay. you guys. Oh, okay. What inspired you to get into wine? Oh. Deep thoughts with Deep Gregory Condon. Friends, and Ellen basically. Bradford and Sean Buchholz. For me, it's friends. Friends inspired me, and they taught me, and it just became, you know, talk about a group hug. Wine is nothing but that. And then just that knowledge built and built and built and built, and that's how I've literally got all of my wine knowledge, except for the quartermaster's class I took. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that that's it. Yeah, friends, that's what got me into wine. Ellen? Oh, God, that's so hard, because I know I feel like there's everyone's like, what's the wine that made you realize? I'm like, I never had a wine. I, I had, and it was just like a restaurant in St. Louis, and like the fanciest thing on our basic list was like a La Crema or something. But like they would, every time they changed the list up, bring in somebody who brought, um, and I was already, I've always been interested in food and cooking and stuff. Uh, and it was the first time I had someone sit down and be like, taste three Chardonnays beside, and I was like so fascinated. And that was what made me first like get a little bit, interested um and then it just kind of like gradually grew from there and then like i've met so many wonderful people and like i don't know yeah and wine's just endlessly the more you learn about it the more you're like i know nothing so yeah, yeah. the more you learn the less you know yeah ever evolving and that is and it's that a, with global warming is changing yeah. yeah but what you just said there i mean it's something that i was like kind of like whining about a little bit when i was talking to you before you know but like <laughs> The more you know, you're like I don't know. The anything. more you realize, you don't know shit. There's yeah. always new Seriously. stuff. Seriously, no, yeah. I'm not accustomed to this moment. But the, keeping the, it clean, the keeping it clean yeah. for the kids. The, 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 but that's really important because uh, you you can go and get these certifications, right? And right. Th that was kind of like the wine that I wanted to like whine about is because a lot of times I'm out there and 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 I meet people or whatever, and I, they give me their business cards, and I see more letters after their you know name than yeah. in their name and it's like what are you trying to presume and i'll never forget about a couple of years ago i was at this tasting and i mean if i had letters i'd use them <laughs> <laughs> but you know i was i was uh i was i was a can in san francisco it was about maybe three or four years ago and i was pouring wines for porter creek and I'm sure. pouring the wines, you know, great wines. wines, great wines. And, you know, that was the first winery I started the company with, okay? <laughs> so, yeah. And I've known Alex for like, you know, 15 years. Awesome story to that whole thing. And I'm pouring the wines, and there's this lovely young lady, and she was answering some of the questions that the people who I'd never, you know, that had, and was like, oh, the, the answers are correct. And she's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a Psalm. I'm like, oh, and I mean, I know pretty much almost anybody and everybody that is in, at least in San Francisco and you know in the Northern California zone that is in a restaurant I'm like oh because well, she gave me her card too yeah like, it's her name so I'm like I was like well what well, what restaurant I was like oh I'm not I'm not I'm not in a restaurant I'm like oh where did you work oh I've, I've never worked in a I'm like <laughs> and, and then she's like and she's like how about I mean have, well, see, have you ever been a psalm I'm just like <laughs> I'm like oh man yeah it, because it, like <laughs> psalm like like psalm is becoming conflated with know. two different things well though. I feel like a such a fraud sometimes because I've got like all these credentials and stuff and then w like when we were talking to uh uh, uh what's his face <laughs> the master psalm after the uh, oh uh sir sir yeah Sulichero, and he was oh, asking yeah. where, was, where do you guys all work and, I was like, just texting with him earlier today and I was guy. like the idiot who should have been able to like name some top like restaurant I worked at I'm like I just do this podcast right now and I got I, I'm like I have some things letters but I'm like I feel like a fraud sometimes because I don't work in a restaurant right now I'm like but, ah. but here's the thing it's, is that you're not a fraud no. you're, you're it's the people that here's the thing is that you presume to be better oh. than that's the thing gotcha. I, I think yeah. To be a psalm, someone like, I think everybody. Should I mean, be I'll psalm probably be like, sure. I know more about wine than most people I know, but right. I do. I know anything really? It's, that, it's <laughs> the people that feel like just because they went and took these accreditation oh. programs that they're, that they're somehow, better, that they're than, better people. than people that actually have worked in it. No. And they, and they, <laughs> without any interest to ask another person or to even have any ounce of humility of like, yeah, wow, you know, like the whole thing of like, you think you got here on your own, or right. you think this nah. is like, it's you like, you got to work with. Yeah. Work with people. Yeah, that and that and that and that. That's perhaps the one thing that I would 
ask and say to the world out there is to have more, hu- I mean, you know, more, <laughs> more humility. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that in because, these political times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's it, it, I say that and like I'm like, oh really, dude? You named the company after yourself? <laughs> oh <laughs> no, no. Because, and, and, and the reason why yeah. is because if this thing goes south, it's my fault. But if it succeeds, it's because of all the friends and the support and the people that 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 make it happen. But wow, well, that feels while we're like, on the feel good vibe, should say, we ask yeah, him like our that, final yeah, question? Like, what's the final question? Like, what do you know, most? Oh, I was gonna mo- say our final. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. no, the one we normally ask people last. last. Yeah, that's what I was gonna. Oh ask. yeah, what well, did you think yeah. I was gonna ask? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> it sounded the way you were phrasing. Uh, no, no, Sean no. was the one who first was like, we should have this question at the very end. But what's what's bringing you joy? What's making you happy? What's what's good in life? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I mean. Really, really or it could be something random that's, no, you know. No, it's really easy. It's really easy for me. You're like it's, Pokemon it's, Go. It's still bringing. It's my wife and kids. And uh-huh. I have to tell you, I am so overly joy and love and happy. It, it's it's what keeps me um, going. And, you know, the, the last few months with the fires and, you know, I've lost a few friends, you know, and I had a very <coughs> personal close friend wine producer friend passed away recently and you know you start to think about your own mortality you start to think about life and the things that are bullshit that don't matter and you know what matters is your it, you know call your mom call your mom call your dad my mom my mom and dad are gone you know and so it's like you know i'm i'm um you, you kind of feel like an orphan sometimes you know you're like dude you're like the grave is right there man like there's nobody else you're you're you know so like the kids you know yeah. my wife how old are your kids just, eight and ten Oh, so cute! No, oh, thank you. So cute. That's so great fun. question. Um, he's the one who first was like, "We should have a happy have ending because it, yeah. it's no. like we, we get people uh, in here bitching about bitching things, about and then we're like, let's end on a good note.' This was so, awesome. That was so good. This oh my so god, good. it's so wonderful to have you here. Yeah, it's so wonderful. Thanks Sean's for Sean's been telling me yeah. how wonderful you were for like so long. So it's like, ah, oh, so Sean's good. wonderful, and you're mm-hmm. wonderful. I'm just an, an, a privilege and honor to be in Aww. your presence. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. all that you do, and thanks for being an awesome guy. I mean, we love you. And uh, cheers, guys, cheers on that to- one. Cheers. We'll cheers. make a. We like this wine. Our glasses are too empty. We like the Foley. Glass. Glass. Happy oh, New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize we were singing. <laughs> Happy New Year, you guys! Happy New Year's, guys. Um, well, we're well, back. now you you know the we're back from vacation. We put through our paces by Gregory. Yes. What Thank a man. you, Gregory. What a man. What a man. We He's love so him. He's so good. So good. His wine is so good too. Thank you for your wine, Gregory. Thank yes. you for you. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Covell, for ever starting and getting Sean into wine so that I could one day meet him. <laughs> Say, let's do a podcast. Thank you, W Sets, for making Ellen study. Yeah, thanks, mm. Court Masters, for doing the same thing. Thank you, UCB, for everything. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. do so much, UCB. You it's do so true. much. It's true. Yeah, well, they're also somewhat to blame for. I'm like, oh, Sean's a, a UCB or and a whiner. Mm hmm. And a, wh- and a whiner. And a whiner. <laughs> and a whiner. Uh, thanks, Dr. America Comedy, for our song. Uh, Thomas Strzok for the graphic. Yep, yep. Do we have anyone else to thank? You know, you guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Hey, we're thanking you. Yes. Hey, I'm talking about the man in the podcast mirror, and that's you. Or a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but I was referencing a Michael Jackson song, so. Oh, which one? I'm talking to the man in, in the, the mirror. mirror. I'm asking him to change a thing. That song. I, I know what one okay. you're talking well, about. There you go. I love it. I just I don't think I ever quite understood what he was saying because it's so like high so, and, and I bet he so was staccato, so stick it back. Yeah. Um yeah, so uh we're back. <laughs> uh we're singing. Um, um we uh, our New Year's resolution. Uh we'll we'll tell you about those maybe on another episode. We'll have wine resolutions. Ooh, wine resolutions like Yeah. That. Uh we have fantastic Betsy Stover Betsy and Stover. Some, uh, some mystery guests show up next week. Oh right. That's right. We do have mystery guests. Yeah, so that's exciting. Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It yeah. really is. It's sort of a new, a new thing. We might keep it, um, keep mystery guests coming on. Mysteries. And then we're we're gonna getting back into back. I, I can't even talk. This is how out of shape we are. We're taking winter break. <laughs> Get back into recording regularly and being back in your earbuds with the wines and the wines and the wines. Yeah. And um, the twines. And the twines. Yeah. <laughs> 
rate, review, subscribe, send us questions, take, you know, keep sending us your grocery store wine yeah, picks, we'll, all that. We'll keep talking them up. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. 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 I just drink wine. wine. I don't fuck with my I just drink wine. wine. I don't fuck with Minute Maid. I just drink wine. wine. I don't fuck with Coffee Maid. I just drink wine. wine. Give me wine. red, white, or say, Don't touch me, motherfucker. I'm a Somali. <laughs> been a boardwalk audio podcast for more information and shows visit boardwalkaudio.com don't forget to rate and subscribe now